so hello and welcome you all to sale to mds dental academy so as students today we are going to discuss neat mds 2020 paper part 6 if any of you have not watched from part 1 to part 5 they can click on the i button above as well as the links are given in description box so as friends please go through the full video because along with the question answer i'm explaining few important concepts as well as images so let's start with the today's video so question 101 that is maximum water resorption occur in which area of nephron it occurs in proximal convoluted tubule so let's see what happened in the nephron in pro proximal convoluted tubule almost absorption of all the important elements occur like a glucose amino acids urea sodium potassium phosphate calcium magnesium and water in proximal state tubule the phosphate absorption occur around 15 percent in thick ascending limb we can see the absorption of sodium potassium calcium and magnesium and in distal convoluted tubule the maximum absorption occur of calcium sodium and magnesium and in collecting duct sodium absorption is mainly seen and in bladder we can see the potassium absorption is variable followed by the phosphate magnesium and sodium and calcium so this is the important point regarding reabsorption in the nephron remember in pct the highest reabsorption of all the elements occur let's see the other question a case report in which a healthy male report to clinic with fever and pain in mouth with fatigue order and excess salivation if you go for intraoral examination it will sponge out lesions in the papilla and interdental gingiva so what's the diagnosis it's a classical symptoms of your anak that is acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis let's see the clinical picture of the anak which is known as strange mouth so you can see this is the bacterial plaque and which is pseudo membrane covering this is the edematous gum and your enlarged marginal and interdental papillae and remember aspirin the four important bacteria involved here are bacteroids fusobacteria spirochetes and pyrotola most often seen in the immunocompromised and smokers it is painful foul breath pseudo membrane formation metallic test treatment is amoxicillin clavonate or clindamycin along with proper oral hygiene and chlorhexidine rinse now another question that after surgery for removal of thyroid gland in the evening patient has cough and suddenly develops massive swelling in the neck region when exploring of site has been done blood clots are removed so what was the reason it is a kind of reactionary hemorrhage so friend, let us understand the different kind of hemorrhages so primary hemorrhage is what at the time of injury or surgery or continuously afterwards reactionary hemorrhage restart after a period of three hours post operatively and secondary hemorrhage restart few days later after surgery so please understand the different types of hemorrhage depending on the time period after surgery then question 104 parents of an infant with cleft lip come to you for advice regarding treatment so what will you tell them regarding timing of primary leap surgery it is five to six months remember aspirin nowadays this cleft palate question is in hot favorite for the examiner so please go with all the point remember in prenatal time you have to go for the prenatal consultation and genetic diagnosis birth to three months leap tapping and nam that is naso alveolar molding Three to four months leap adhesion leap repair around one year palate repair 2.5 to 5 years speech therapy and vpa surgery that's a velopharyngeal repair six to nine years orthodontic treatment and alveolar bone grafting and after 16 to 18 years orthognathic and aesthetic surgery is being carried out then we can see which probe is used to measure forcation it's a neighbor's probe so as per this is your neighbor's probe and along with that we will see the classification of forcation so this is class 1 up to 3 mm this is class 2 4 to 6 mm and this is class 3 a very bad prognosis that is through and through so please as know this classification of forcation also now one more important case report a patient is there with the discremity gingivitis photosensitive area acral skin blistering and pocular mass so what it indicates it indicates kindler syndrome so you can see in this diagram as the discremity gingivitis the scaly areas of the skin the blistering and as well as in the few area you can see cutaneous atrophy so this is the classical sign and symptoms of kindler syndrome then a known case of epilepsy develops seizures in dental chair so which drug in your emergency kit will helpful that is 
diazepam will help out now let's see how to manage status epilepticus so what it is it is a continuous seizure activity for more than 5 to 10 minutes or two or more seizure without full recovery whenever we are treating status epilepticus patient always check finger stick blood glucose and consider paradoxin for INH toxicity. So first line for treatment is lorazepam, diazepam or midazolam. Second line is a phenytoin or phosphenytoin, valproic acid, phenobarbital or levetiracetam. Third line is a phenobarbital and propofol. So please aspirin know all these three lines of treatment for status epilepticus. Now a patient is there with a severe headache and loss of vision in one eye. CT device aneurysm near internal carotid artery in the cavernous sinus. So aspirin which nerve is going to affect it first? It is cranial nerve 6. Then delta clasp is used in which appliance? It is used in twin block. So this is the good image based question for the delta clasp. Now when a test is done on a population not seeking treatment, so what it is known as? It is a screening test. Now which is a dynamic test? to re-evaluate the tendency for blades of a bird to pass through a single point. It is run out. Remember aspirin, the run out is more for longer shank bird you can see and it is shorter for less or we can say shorter bird shank. So what run out? Run out is the eccentricity or displacement of a bird head from its axis of rotation while it is turned. Average value of clinically acceptable run out is 0.023 mm. Then the fontanelle between coronal and suicidal suture is anterior fontanelle and it fuses around 18 months of age. Now case report, a 68 year old diabetic patient report with labor breathing, pedal edema and collection of fluid in peritoneal cavity. So what is the diagnosis? It is renal failure. Then what is the mechanism of action of carbon peroxide in bleaching? It is a formation of hydrogen peroxide on contact with saliva. So let's see the mechanism of action of bleaching. Remember it is an oxidative reaction. The enamel to be bleached donates electron to the bleaching agent. And 10% carbamate peroxide break down to 3% H2O2 and 7% urea. And the hydrogen peroxide metabolizes into water and free radicals of oxygen are released. And this free radicals possess a single electron which is thought to combine with the chromogens to decolorize or solubilize them. Then uh, you can see the little self aspirant. So it's a 7 year old boy present with a short skull, proptosis, narrow maxilla, mid phase deficiency, hypertellurism and prominent supraorbital ridge with high palatal vault. So what it is? It depicts Krausen syndrome. Then for secondary alveolar grafting in case of CLCP, the ideal site is for graft harvesting is anterior iliac crest. Then a patient is there with a history of cough and a gray membrane and the patient is positive for conia diphtheria. And you can see the antibiotic sensitive test reveals the following picture. So what the test is known as? It is allic gel precipitation test. Now a patient is there with a missing tooth number 2627. He desires to have RPD. And while doing mouth preparation for the RPD, the dentist establishes two important things. That is a proximal guide planes and raised seed. So when you have to prepare the raised seed, remember it is prepared after the proximal guide plane preparation. Then aspirant. Where you can see aortic aneurysm in syphilis. In case of tertiary syphilis, aortic aneurysm is present. So what all indicates poor prognosis for squamous cell carcinoma? Remember grade of tumor, angio invasion, spread along the nerve. If there, it indicates poor prognosis for SCC, except presence of inflammatory cells. That's all experience for the today. If you want latest papers or last minute reviews and notes, you can DM me. And we are going to start from 20 December new batch for the coming 2021 year. If anybody want to attend demo lecture, they can contact me. So aspirin, please keep on reading. Now very few days are left for examination and you should keep in mind that you have to revise more and more. Don't go for the new thing right now. One time revision will really helpful and will help you to gain confidence in the examination. And any doubt, you can contact me anytime. So see you all with part 7 tomorrow. Till then, Take care and study hard.